shouting and, oh, I'm overbalanced. Yeah. But if it was a player decided, and you'd need a certain ring set up for this, of which Hull was ideal because you've got the players walking past A block and F block, mm. and that's where the most vociferous Stingrays fans sat. You don't sort of really have that at, at Nottingham's rink or at Sheffield's rink. Coventry, you do because you have got fans stood around. Mm. And I think if a player was leaving the ice and got involved in a brawl with a fan, that would be a major new story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because suddenly you get to the stage whereby this isn't just fighting on the ice between two players who consent to it to a certain extent. We're starting to get into legal territories if this is assault. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, it's still not good news. I've always wondered how bad a brawl on the ice would have to be before one of Her Majesty's constables would have to get on the ice. Do you know what I mean? Because like, we've had like full-on bench clearances where 15 guys are scrapping, and in any other scenario in life, that is a lot of arrestable offences happening. Yeah, it goes on for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but you never feel that it's not going to stop. Mm. Because... You might have a fight, you might have a couple of fights. Eventually, the main protagonists are kept apart or injured to the point that they don't want to fight anymore. Mm. And then everybody else was sort of on the ice because they have to be, it's their duty, it's a bench clearance, I've got to do my bit. Mm. They don't necessarily want to keep fighting. So I don't think you can get a fight that goes on for long enough to a point at which the ring security says, we're going to have to call the police here because the officials on the ice, four of them, can't stop the fighting. Yeah. This fighting has gone on so long now. It would have to be the, the refs themselves that said, actually, you're going to have to do this. I can't see that scenario happening. I'm a boy of the North East, and I remember very vividly when Alan Shearer was signed for Newcastle United for the record of £15 million at the time. It was on front pages, it was on back pages... It was huge news, and my mother still didn't recognise him when he knocked on our door. But that's a different story for a different day. The old hypothetical, we said, well, what if Ovechkin or Crosby signed for the Steelers? If a player of that magnitude signed for the Sheffield Steelers, do you not think that would squeeze onto the front pages? Yeah, that gets onto the front pages of the Sheffield Star. It maybe makes the front page of the Yorkshire Post... It's not doing nationally, is it? But it's not doing it nationally because mm. the people that are reading the Daily Mail or Express, whatever paper it is, they don't know who Alex Ovechkin is. They don't know who Sidney Crosby is. Mm. So the story means nothing to them. Mm. It's a person they don't know signed for someone they don't care about. Mm. There are so many niche sporting things that happen that most people don't know about. That's true. Um... Ty Woffenden, Speedway World Champion, third time. Nah. Exactly. Yeah. British person, pinnacle of their sport, nobody notices. So it can't just be a sporting achievement thing, because that doesn't get it from other minor sports, which hockey still is. I've got one. I've got a theory for you. This nation, especially certain parts of its press, have a love affair with the Royals. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, is it the Express or, or the Telegraph that every couple of weeks will still run a story about Princess Diana? Yeah, I think that's it? the Express. Yeah. Prince George plays professional ice hockey. He ends up just trying it out, getting, getting good. His debut match doesn't get us at least half the front page of the sun. Okay. That's an interesting angle, actually. It wouldn't be the lead story... Oh, actually, it might be. Here's a scenario for you, then. Mm. Rather than it being George playing, yeah. how about it's just William and Kate are on an official visit to yeah. Coventry. Yeah. They take in a game at the Sky Dome. Yeah. And just like the Coventry City goalkeeper, the puck gets deflected out and hits the Royal. Oh. That's on the front page. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Kate maimed by hockey puck. <laughs> You know, or whatever it would be. But that is a story that would make the front pages because Royals are good news anyway. Mm. The fact that just at the game, oh, there's a good chance for a sub to come with a clever, clever pun title. Yeah. Um, so that's going to feature in the Hit back. on Her Highness. Yeah, but to actually get hit and maybe injured, 
that is the news story. And then there would be like, what is this ice hockey and why is it so dangerous and why were the royals even there? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. But we've seen, I mean, I remember sort of David Cameron going across to America when he was uh, prime minister and watching a game of college basketball. Yeah. Sitting right down at the front where easily an errant pass could go astray and clock you. Mm. You're not paying attention. You're discussing your trade deals and your midterm election strategies with Obama, <laughs> as he was at the time, and all these sort of things. And suddenly the the loose pass comes across and whacks you on the side Smash of the face. Smacks you on the face, yeah. Yeah. You know, it makes for a picture and a story that's of interest to the population as a whole. Yeah. So, yeah, if you can get a royal to a game, mm. just being at a game is enough for a local front-page banner. Because... But once they get hit, mm. then you've got a national story. Because we got that little bit of bump from um, from Stuart scoring his first GB goal. Yes. And his dad, Rod, getting on the telly. Going, That's my boy! <laughs> you know, having a great time. And so the national media picked it up because, like, what's Rod Stewart up to? Oh, it's someone plays ice hockey. Oh, that's hilarious. You know what I mean? I think if there's a celebrity tie-in and it's big enough, I think we've got a... I think that's, our, like, our real chance about having it being, like, a massive tragedy. What famous hockey fans are there out there? In the UK or just in general? Uh, there aren't many A-list celebrity fans. Yeah, like, it's a question of how far down the list do you go before you say Colin Murray's a big, new, uh, big Belfast <laughs> Giants fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gail M's Olympic medalist, last at the, the last MK game. I think it's got to be that kind of thing. Like, it's, like I say, Prince George grows up being an ice hockey fan. Like the the Royals are Aston Villa fans. Do you see what I mean? So every so often, Aston Villa do get that nice photo moment of William or Harry being miserable at a football game. You know? Can we sort of? I mean, William's also president of the Football Association. Yeah. Can we not try and get, you know, Princess Kate to be president of the Elite League? That's a great idea. The position holds no power, no influence. She can give away the trophy. It's a figurehead, yeah. It'd be great. Get her down to uh, finals weekend. The other thing I'd probably say, though, is you talk about, like, big celebrity. Justin Bieber and Michael Bublé have warmed up and played with yeah. both the Panthers and the Storm. Trade the Storm, yeah. Didn't quite hit the front pages. It was, again, it got good traction, but... Uh, if he signed... Or if Bieber signed. Yeah. If Bieber <laughs> signed and iced the game... Yeah. Then that would. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, probably on the front page of a celebrity magazine rather than the front page of a newspaper. We're we talking about the Daily Star here. Yeah, possibly. Actually, for the Daily Star, as long as he's got a nice set of boobs... Definitely on the front page. So that's it for another episode. If you have any comments about the issues we discussed or suggestions for future hypotheticals, then tweet us at Hockey Hypo and make sure you leave us a comment and a rating wherever you're listening from. On behalf of Stephen Dowson, this is Jonathan Fernley saying goodbye.